gives kind of weird gradations or colors or whatever. Only that camera can create that. Mm. You know, even if I wanted to create that, I can't. But uh, so usually I take whatever is there available for me. Well, um, are you one of those people that um, always carry a camera with you? No, I, I no, I don't. <laughs> do you you find a, you find a specific time when you say, okay, I'm going to work now? Yes, and yes, I I do have times like that. But usually I leave it to chance. It's, it's uh. like my life. Uh, something beautiful is here and I don't have a camera. You know, it wasn't meant to be. You know, I, was meant to, I wasn't meant to take that picture. So I just absorb it and, and use it somewhere else. Free spirit. I, I, I like to think so. Okay, <laughs> all right. We're joined by photographer Gong Pa John Dax Lu. We'll be right back. Coming up, find out why photographer Gung Pa John Dax Lu returned to Korea after 40 years of life in the United States. For me to be a new up-and-coming artist at 50 is kind of <laughs> nice. Heart to Heart is joined by photographer John Dax Lu today. Uh, and you, as a free spirit we were talking, mm -hmm. um, you attended three universities yes, and majored in film art and literature and design mm -hmm. and you never studied photography of all things well actually I, I learned all the process in junior high school mm. and then in high school I learned different process of printing and then I got really arrogant because I, <laughs> I got so many awards of national status that uh, my mind just said I said there's nothing more for me to learn in photography. Mm. This was you know, way back when. You this received was like the Kodak um, Award? Right, right. This was in 78. Uh, wow, way back then. Way back then. Uh, it doesn't seem that long. <laughs> but, uh, uh, it, it's that kind of arrogant mind at that time uh, that got me interested in other things. Mm. You know, that kind of took 40 years, but... Uh, um, yeah, the, the, it's the learning part is I, I was I'm always learning, mm -hmm. you know, with about photography. There's always new thing coming up and and new people doing new things. So. Well, were you always? Uh, did you always want to be want to be challenged? Is that why? Because if you were good at something, you said, yeah. oh, I don't need it anymore." Is that why you didn't pursue photography in the university? No, I, I thought it was a natural progression to get into cinema I see. after photography. But there was so, I went to USC, it's a, it's a university, good university for, for cinema, for, for us, film. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I was the only Asian, and I felt kind of, uh, I guess you can't call it really racism, but you know, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's controlled by this group of nationality right. there. And I don't want to mention the name, but <laughs> anyway, but uh, I, I, got, I, got, I got sick of that. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it, it's not right for... Mm -hmm a third year student to teach the first year student. Oh, That kind okay. of thing. And, I see. and so I said, I'm leaving LA. And then you went to study art and literature. Right, I went up to Humboldt State. It's, it's kind of haven for uh, right. hippies. Right. Um, so you know what I did there. <laughs> but that, that's where I uh, studied like fine art mm -hmm. and literature. I, I touched on everything about fine art and I like writing, I love writing, so. And then why design after that? Um, and then what happened was that uh, my mother opened some kind of business and she, she wanted me to run it. So I ran it for a couple of years and then, um, but then my college, I need a college degree, you know, I thought about it and hey, if I don't have a college degree, well, you know, what are people going to say? <laughs> so th it was easy for me to just go to art school because you don't have to take liberal arts classes. <laughs> so, and, and then, and even at that time, I, I, I assumed that I was an artist. Well, you know, you, you may have a reason to be arrogant because these are some of the schools that are very difficult to get into, but you just mm -hmm. went from one to the other to the other and yeah, very it, simply and easily. Oh, it, those, those, kinds of, those kind of things come easy for me. I don't I know see. why. I don't know why. It's, just a, it's a natural thing for me. Mm. But, um, well, why, why return to Korea after 40 years of absence and then with <sighs> photography? Uh, like I said before, I think it's kind of poetic. I, I think I all, I'm a Korean American, mm -hmm. but 
I never got used to the American part. Oh. And I always kind of missed Korea. I it just whole everything about Korea uh, touches me very deeply. Hmm. And uh, and I and this couple of years that I stayed straight, I learned more about Korea, about traditional things, and um, and I just fell in love. And then I I think for for me to come back and do a Buddhist thing and have a show here with what I love, it just kind of set of made sense, mm. kind of poetic sense for me in my life. Mm. And at this point in my life, it just, everything made sense. And there were, and there were a couple of people who helped me a lot and to get used to everything and for me to find out about Korea. It, 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 was, an, it, it was an interesting journey. Mm. And I'm, I guess I'm beginning a new journey now but uh, a friend of mine in Singapore told me that you're so, so young <laughs> in, in art world, you know. Mm. I go, oh, really? I go, that's great, great. It's like I'm in a toy store, you know. It's, <laughs> I'm, I'm a kid, I'm in a toy store. I have all these things to play with. Yeah. Well, let me just ask back, um, mm. what made you grab a camera back in junior high school? Um, I had this, there, there was this man, he was, a, he was a photographer, and he was a hippie. It was hippie days, <laughs> uh, dying days, but uh, it just looked so cool, you know. Mm. And my mother had this old Fujika camera that uh, she didn't use, so I started taking pictures with it, wanting to be like him, mm. and being trying to be cool. But uh, it happened that whatever I took got awards. Well, fascinating, but mm. very unusual. And um, how did that make you feel? Uh, at that time, I didn't feel anything. It was just natural for me to do. <laughs> you know, it's just, uh, and I thought everybody could do it. Uh, I found out that it doesn't the, happen that no, way. No, no, it doesn't. Uh, so I sold myself very cheap. Mm. <laughs> well, no, you've taken that journey for 40 mm. years, and now mm. you're back. And mm. um, what uh, kinds of other uh, exhibitions do you have in mind? I mean, are you still focused on, like, Buddhism and zooming in and getting to the essence of things, or will you be, like, preparing a whole another show? Well, some, something like that will will have a layer in it, but mm -hmm. what I want to do now with uh, with the next show will be with music, mm. and I, I think music is the most conceptual art of all. Yes, yes. And it actually does inspire, and, and it makes you cry. You know, music makes you cry. You look at a picture, you don't cry. Mm. You know? Well, you could. Well, you could, but I, I haven't I haven't encountered anything in history that mm. makes me cry. Mm. But music makes me cry mm. very easily. Mm. You know? um, and I want that kind of thought integrated with, uh, with music. And I, I met this man named Kim Gi-young. He's, he's a composer. And I listened to his music and he had everything, every element that I liked. He ah. had kind of pop underneath, mm -hmm. but it went to very experimental, experimental stage. Mm. And it just fitted perfect with what I do. So, but I'm, I'm planning, a, uh, I guess it could, it could be called a performance art also, but I'm planning something that, that I collaborate with him, but it won't be like, you know, regular slideshow mm -hmm. music, let's say, you know. It won't be like that, but it, it's rolling in my head right I now. I see. Well, as a, as a Korean-American mm -hmm. um, who started here, took a long journey mm. and has sort of returned in a mm. full cycle. Mm. Do you think Korea will be your future home for a while? I, I think it will definitely be my home. Uh, I'm, I'm going to base myself here and, and then branch out. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, it's like a new world. I'm mm -hmm. going to try to find a new world out there, even though I was outside. Mm -hmm. Now I'm back. and um, it, 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 For me to be... Uh, new up-and-coming artist at 50. It's kind of <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, that is. Mm. Um, do you, well, as a free spirit and mm. the way you talk, it seems like mm. you're very, it doesn't matter where you are. It wouldn't matter. You could probably do this in Siberia. It, it really doesn't, but here, I lost 35 pounds. <laughs> you know, I made a conscious choice to change, uh -huh. phys both physically and mentally. And, uh, and this country gave me a lot, you know, even though I was here for a very short time. But, uh, uh, I'm a patriot you know, right. uh, to pay back to the country. All right. Well, yeah. thank you for being with us. Thank um, you. And thank good you. luck with all that um, you're doing. I look forward to your next exhibition. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.
Well, it'd be nice to keep an eye on all the works that um, John Dax Liu is doing with photography. And you can rewatch this episode on our Arirang website. Thank you for being with us. We'll see you next time.